normally you pick up your remote, turn on your TV, and it, you know, turns on. Lovely display, looks nice. That's what we usually expect from a television. But in 2021, it's so much more. And the TV right in front of you is the Samsung QN98. I've got the 65 inch variant, and I have to say though, this is probably Samsung's best QLED TV that I've seen. Now, this is a Neo QLED TV, which is a little bit different from your standard QLED affair, because this also has the, of course, mini LED matrix behind the TV. Now, I can go into a lot of spiel about how that works, but honestly, you, all you care about is, does it work well? And it, does it cover the needs that I like? Like gaming, audio, watching movies, and features. So we're gonna take a look at all those segments, but let's take a look at the design of the TV, function and features first, we're gonna jump into sound, then we'll jump into gaming. So first off, like I said, this is a 65 inch TV. It's really nice, light and thin. And also setting up the TV is actually pretty straightforward. You can do it by yourself, but since it's a 65 inch, I, I suggest you do it with someone else. Now, lifting the TV and placing it is easy. Uh, and you've got a plethora of ports at the back. Now you've got four HDMI ports, you've got an ethernet port. Uh, this TV doesn't have the one connector box which is a bummer, I really like that from Samsung. But that being said though, it's easy to connect all your, uh, your components to this TV and get things running. Now one of the simplest parts and the most important part of a TV is the remote control. And Samsung's remote this year has taken things to the next level. Now we've seen other companies talk about their remotes for smart TVs and functions, but the remote from the Samsung TV stayed true to being simple, effective, and honestly, I like it. It's super light. This remote doesn't have a replaceable battery anymore. It does come with two charging options, which is really important. One is USB Type-C port at the bottom of the, of the remote, which is great. And also there is a solar panel. And you're going like, really, why a solar panel? Well, this charges with indoor lighting, which means you never have to charge this again. Now I've been using this TV for roughly around two weeks, maybe three, haven't had to charge it at all, and I'm sure if I continue using it, if I get to keep it, that I probably won't have to charge it, period. Now the TV is very, the remote is very simple and easy, gives you a couple of options to access a few things that I think are really important. One of them is the new game mode function by pressing and holding the play pause button and also quick access to the apps you like, like Netflix, Amazon Prime, as well as also Samsung TV Plus. Now, this takes us to the software. Samsung software has been really steady, of course, with their Tizen OS for their TVs, allowing you to select the apps you want right there on the carousel in front of you, quick and easy access to jump in, whether you're jumping into gaming or you're jumping into Netflix, it really doesn't matter. Very simple, very easy. Now, before we get into visuals, let's take a listen and also see what we're getting from this TV to hear the sound that you get from this television. Okay, look, honestly, this TV sounds great. The Object tra uh, Tracking Plus really does a good job in giving you just that nice, rich, robust sound. Whether you're watching uh, movies, TV shows, or even gaming, you can hear it and you can hear it quite well. The, also, the Intelligent Mode, which selects images and video, does a fantastic job as well with the audio profiles. Now, when it comes to the profiles for watching content, this is where a lot of people talk about calibration and also we'll talk about what to, to use. Now, the filmmaker mode is probably the best mode to select because it gives you something closest to the filmmaker. Intelligent mode tries to manage things a bit and I think this is where you see some differences. Clear example is looking at, of course, of course Avengers uh, Infinity War and that scene with Thor and the Lightning watching it in, of course, intelligent mode and also watching in, in a filmmaker mode, you can see the differences there. Now, all I think is all depends on preference, but I think the TV does a good job in capturing those. Now, when you're talking about 
HDR and color. I think it does a really good job there. And uh, look, honestly, if you're gonna notice anything, you must be a TV aficionado to really go into the nitty gritty details, but you're gonna love the experience using it to watch content on this TV. Now, this TV also has extra features. One of them is, of course, the multi-view mode. Now, this is something we've seen in Samsung TVs in the past, but I will say, though, that this is much better because it now allows me to game and stream content like my TikTok content uh, if I want to, and I can switch audio between any of the two sources. So I basically have picture in picture, and I can do it with multiple sources at the same time. Now, gaming is what we care about on this channel, and Daniel will say I don't game as much, but you know what? I do a fantastic job on Forza, and you can see with the Forza content there, it looks really good. Gaming on this TV is great because, of course, it's got a HDMI 2.1 port, just one, by the way, um, out of the four, but using that, you get the full breadth of it, and there is a game mode with a new feature within the game mode. So once you turn on your, your console, be the Xbox Series X or PlayStation 5, it actually pops up this menu that gives you uh, details of what is actually going on with your gaming experience. So it shows you your frame rates, are you on the fastest frame rate, uh, as well as also your uh, resolution, uh, aspect ratio, and if you can change size and positioning. And this is great and it works out pretty well. To quickly access it, as I mentioned earlier, is just press and hold the play and pause button. Now, I like this because it allows you to really see what you're getting off the TV and shows you the advantages of this. Now, the one thing I noticed is that even when I switched uh, my PS5 to uh, the uh, non-HDMI 2.1 ports, I was still able to get the full experience according to what the information was showing me. Same thing with the Xbox Series X, playing Forza Horizon, you could clearly see that as well. Now, when you're actually playing on PC, which you can do with this system, this allows you to do a little bit more. So I had my PC connected, I fired up some Call of Duty Warzone, and you can see I can switch between the aspect ratio. So I went from 16 by nine to 21 by nine, and I could go to 32 by nine. And 32 by nine, it was really a narrow strip stretched out, and you can, of course, change the positioning on there on screen. The other thing also is that when you change those aspect ratios, your resolution drops from, the, from 4K to 38, uh, 3840 by 1600. So it drops down resolution a little bit, but in terms of just performance, the CV handles really well. And of course, you're running this off the HDMI 2.1 port. It was amazing to see a PC, uh, PC game run really well on this TV to that extent. I think a lot of people will like it. I think gamers really hit the nail on the head. So now you guys are asking, Thunder E, this TV is great. Is there anything else that's wrong with it? Well, there are a few things that I will mention. Now, first of all, is the fact that this TV comes with one HDMI 2.1 port, even though other manufacturers offer more than one, and Samsung offers four on the Q95A in Europe. The TV also doesn't come with the one connector box, which is was a huge thing Samsung introduced. You can get that with a Q95A in Europe, but not in the US. Why are we suffering here in America? I don't know. Now, the other thing also is that it doesn't support Dolby Atmos, and I think it's about time Samsung does that because Netflix and Amazon Prime Video and all the other services support Dolby Atmos, and it would be nice to see that support for at least Dolby Atmos and HDR10+. So I'd like to see that there. Now, the other thing I wanted to bring up is something my buddy uh, uh, Snazzy Labs actually brought up, which is using um, a calibration system for your TV. I talked about filmmaker mode and intelligence mode. Intelligence mode is trying to do that for you, but we do know the new Apple TV uh, allows you to calibrate your TV using your iPhone. Samsung has this ecosystem with the Galaxy devices, and we, we know Samsung TVs are rated one of the best TVs on the planet, so why not us use our Galaxy phones to calibrate our TVs. I think it makes perfect sense. I think it's something that should happen. Hopefully Samsung thinks about that and finds a way to do that quite easily so that users can get the best viewing experience of this television. Now, that being said though, I really like this TV and if you're looking for a TV to pick up now that gives you excellent picture quality, daytime viewing, nighttime, watching video, movies, content, gaming, I think the Samsung Neo QLED TV, the Q90A, is the TV you should pick up. Now, it's probably the best QLED TV I've seen on the market, and I will definitely recommend it.
So if you guys have any questions or any comments, let me know. If you want to know more about this TV or other TVs, leave your comments down below. If you want to know more about the TV in depth, look, there are guys like FOBO out there who you can watch and I'll put a link for his channel in the description as well. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and always enjoy entertainment.